The UK's Department for International Development works in deprived areas of the world to make sure aid money reaches people who need it. Now, I don't have a drama giving aid to people who are suffering, especially if we had a hand in their misery. However, the decision to give £98 million worth of aid to a country which has a nuclear programme, space programme and a thriving movie industry is insane. Yes, you heard me right. India has all of the above. Not to mention it now gives out more than £650 million in aid that it receives. Have we gone mad? We have an NHS on its knees. Spiralling climb all over. Frontline services struggling to cope. Former servicemen are homeless and injured. And we're funding India. Whoever is sanctioning this lunacy needs to have a long, hard look at what is going on around them. What happened to charity beginning at home? I know some amazing things I could do with 98 million, and my list wouldn't include lobbing another country's satellites up in the air. Phil, I mean, I would start by saying that there's no evidence that our money is going to the space program. That's what I've been asked to say. So let's make that clear. I, um, I'm a great believer in, in overseas aid. I'm a great supporter of it. I have a problem, oddly, when it comes to places like India. Because India is increasingly a wealthy nation. And if India chooses that the vast amount of that money should go to a few rather than the many, that's surely a choice for India. And I'm not sure that we should be giving aid. I'm a great believer in giving aid to parts of Asia. I'm a great believer in giving aid to Africa, where I go and, and do some stuff every year. But I, I do think there is an issue about saying, well, hang on, if this is quite a rich country and it chooses that that money should go to the few rather than the many, is that for us to interfere? And I'm not sure it is. I think no, but should, they've got their own cash to do that with if they want yeah. to give the... We've got our own cash and we need to spend it on stuff that we need to spend on as far I've as I'm I've discussed this many times and I can see Greg looking at me already, but I, the, the distinction for me is aid, I absolutely agree with you. If a country, we're either the fifth or sixth richest in the planet, if we can't help provide anti-malaria nets for children who are going to die, that is a or pretty poor thing. Or humanitarian aid or disaster relief. Yeah, disaster problem, relief. My yeah. problem is... taken into the equation, by the my way. My problem is development, where we then start spending money on bridges in Uganda or wherever it might be, or giving money, as you say, to India, which is a country which has its own foreign aid programme. Exactly. So, we are, as you said, we're giving... Money. Now, that... So, aid, yes, absolutely, we should. Development, I have real problems with, and that's but where I... I I've, I've, I've been over to Africa, and, I, and I've worked on quite a few missions. And I've seen aid money. In fact, one job that I went on, I was paid in consecutively numbered $100 bills. That was aid money. That had to be aid money, nothing else, OK? So, mm. you know, if you'd have a hard enough job controlling where that money goes, all I'm saying is we shouldn't be probably giving as much as what we are and certainly shouldn't be giving well, the countries that have got it's, that sort of boat you know, to spend themselves. India is a sophisticated burgeoning economy now. It's something like seventh richest economy in the world. And it, it's, it's predicted this year it's going to overtake us and become the fifth richest economy in the world. And what, what, I, what I find incredible is that in 2012, the, Indian, the then Indian finance minister told this country that they didn't need or want our aid anymore, that they, they, they just didn't need it. He actually described it, this Indian finance minister, as a peanut in our development exercise. As a what? As peanut. a peanut, peanut in our development exercise. <laughs> well, that peanut back. But what, happened, but what happened was that the Indian government um, were told by the British government that to give up this aid, to cancel the aid, would cause grave political embarrassment. This was a story that was run in the Telegraph back then. So we are giving money to an Asian superpower that doesn't actually want it. And this was in 2012, at a time that this country was in the grips of austerity, when we were closing libraries, when the NHS was in a mess, when the social care budget mm. was in the toilet. So we were throwing 150 million quid a year back then. And we were supposed supposed to have given up giving aid to India in 2015. Mm. Why have we restarted? They're richer than ever. In, in, in the next, it's predicted by something like 2025, their economy would be five trillion. I think it, it's, my understanding, it's my understanding that um, the, the government is trying to sort of recast aid as mutual economic development. Yes. And so that's why you have this odd situation where by India is both a donor and a recipient of right. aid. And it looks like countries are playing this weird game of kind of beggar my neighbour. So I'll give you that and you give me that. And you sort of think, why are we doing this? Is why that what, why we are we all paying it out? With Theresa May in Africa? Yeah, is that yes, what but what it's to do with it, it's about mutual but economic we've got, we've development. A, They're actually, we're actually investing and we're getting something back. With it. We've, we've got, got a got clip of, of Theresa May yeah. in Africa. And this is what she said. I want to put our development budget and expertise at the centre of our partnership as part of an ambitious new approach. 
and use this to support the private sector to take root and grow. And I can today announce a new ambition. By 2022, I want the UK to be the G7's number one investor in Africa. See, I said, as I said, it's investments, not handouts. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I go to Uganda every year. I give quite a lot of money to certain projects there. And I think a lot of what is done is actually very effective. Um, our, our choice. Well, that's, that's my credit, choice. Yeah. That's credit, our credit choice. to you. Yes, and, and, I think it's, and it, but I think it's the choice of the populace, because yeah. we elect a government but, and it's going to spend... The taxpayer, the taxpayer don't but, want his money going over there. If you no, said the taxpayer, no, where's your quid going? He goes, I don't want yeah. it going can over I, there. I, I want it going I over here. Can I give yes, you a weird piece, a data point, as it's called now? I heard from somebody in DFID that one of the problems with our aid budget, or what are they now, we now call our investment and development budget, or whatever it's called, is that the disbursement parcels are... No, can't be smaller than five million. So you have these tiny charities or, you know, these little projects and actually they don't need five million. You no. don't need to give a woman's collective that's involved in microfinance or whatever it is or using energy from their mobile phone. But phones. the computer says but no if But the computer if says no, lower. and that's why yeah. they get five million. Do you see? And it's the whole but thing Rachel, is too clunky. We and keep of course, on, lots of ways. We keep on hearing yeah. stories, yeah. don't we, about how, you yeah. know, people in this country are quite rightly furious about it because they're giving their hard-earned cash. And the stories that they hear, a lot of the yeah. money goes to, to, to corrupt despots, a lot of the money yeah. goes on crazy schemes like... Don't forget the charity sector is part of recipient of multi Yeah, but they're the stories that certain newspapers love to run and therefore you believe it's but, all but of them. I go out, do you, do you go out to Africa? No, of course not. I do. I've seen a lot of the projects that are there and some of them, I think, are incredibly effective. But now, what do you think that teaching kids but, in Tanzania how to juggle is effective? No, but that's just... That's what I'm saying. You that just keep reading the Daily Mail and you'll be fine. But surely you must see some of these organisations with... You know, stack after stack of four by fours, paying extortionate rents to people, just yeah. taking the mickey, basically. Yes. And I've seen it in Afghanistan, no, I, I, I've seen I, it in Gaza, I, I, I've seen it all over the world. I mean, Greg, there's nowhere I haven't been. You, in, that, in that top list of 20 or, or 10 places where we give the most of our aid, I've been to all of them apart from Somalia. All right? And all of them wasting money somewhere. We're just hemorrhage money. That's, that's there is the money that should be spent here, here, not there. There is some money wasted, I think, inevitably. And I, I don't believe the figures, and they say what... When, I mean, if you look at the figures that come out of different, they say only a tiny percentage is wasted. I don't believe that. I think if you're going to go and work in, these, in certain countries, you're bound to lose some of the money. We better hear the what different is. What is what, the question is... What is worth doing and what isn't? Let's hear what DFID, Department of International Development, actually say. DFID ended traditional aid to India in 2015, they tell us. The UK now provides the country with world-leading expertise and private investment, which boost prosperity, create jobs and open up markets, while generating a return for the UK at the same time. This is firmly in our interest. Not a penny of British taxpayers' aid money has gone on India's space programme, supporting something you said earlier, Greg. Yeah. But just coming back to Mrs May in Africa, and you played in that clip. During that trip, she pledged... Four billion pounds <coughs> in support to African economies. In some instances, or a lot of it, to create jobs for young Africans. Shouldn't you be creating jobs yeah. for young Brits? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, but but what you're saying? Well, you're... There's no buts, is there? No, Greg? no, there is. No, yes, you can there do is. both. You can yes, do both. Is. But there is a hold there, on. Come on, Rachel. There is well, 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 I want to come in on migration here. Well, you off, uh, I often sit here and you say, why can't you know? Why do we have? We've got to stop non-EU migration. If you're going to stop non-EU migration, you have to invest in what we can't oh call my. the third world anyway. We, we now call the global south. This. This is money well spent, Nick. But what about kids what who haven't spending? got a job? Well, so where's the money they stay at home? Don't just say they do, Rachel. No, but <laughs> you, I want you to accept my point that if you want to stop no, I don't. the global no, I don't. south that's from a coming bottom, and getting that's a bottomless and trying pit. to find jobs here, you need to help them there. Pit. And well, as Phil said at the start of this, charity begins at home. You know, this money is being given away at a time when, when old people in this country are dying because there's, there's not yep, enough money for somebody to go and feed them. them. And they can't that, you'd have scandal. said that That's any scandal. time in history. About no, it's worse now, Greg. You know the no, social I don't think it is. You know the social care. I don't think it is. I, th I think what matters, I mean, the projects I get involved in in Africa, I'm, I watch young people go from having no hope no money. job. That's, that's, not, that's not no, my... No, this but I would quite like to get some government money into it as well because right. I, we could do more. But, I mean, you should not underestimate what 
poverty exists. Okay, but you don't dole out money in five billion pound loads as as Rachel. Five million. Five million. I'm so sorry. Five million pounds. You probably deal in I don't know, but tens of thousands. So it's all carefully. It's not. It's not pile after pile of Land Rover and Mercedes that should go into dictators, is it? And there's poverty all over the world. We've got homeless soldiers on the streets here. That's poverty. There's poverty in California. Should we just should we lob a few million quid over there? No, because the only I'm saying is because that's the discussion we were having at the beginning, which is to say how rich is a society? How rich is that that country? And can that should that deal with its own poverty? And India is very and, and, rich it, and that's what I think is right. Yeah. I think, I think there's an argument. Sort ourselves out. Yeah. 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 Last word to you, Phil. Let's sort ourselves out before we start doling it out around right, the world. Well,